Now that many of you are getting your Too Many Bones Trove Chest, box engineer Justin Schaub created a little guide for how to get everything inside. This Calyx friendly chest was designed with both art and functionality in mind. It will store all existing Too Many Bones content, plus additional content we're planning over the next few years, all while looking great on your shelf. The Trove chest was designed to be the exact depth of a Calyx shelf. With the cover on, you can store the opening magnet along the bottom front of the chest, resting on the bottom edge. Feel free to store it with the cover on or off. If you remove the cover, the opening magnet can be affixed to any one of the drawers. The top left box is designed to fit all of your Too Many Bones reference materials from rule books to reference sheets to your build a tyrant pad. The two vertical trays on the right side of the chest are used to store the 19 tyrants we've created so far, plus two more trays for build a tyrant. There's even enough room for five more tyrant trays in the future, in case Nobulus decides to stage a gruesome resurrection. In each tray, you will place the dice, chips, and cards of one of your tyrants, allowing you to easily access everything you need for a given adventure. Please take note that not all of the trays will be full, and Nam's tray will have a few extra cousins in it if you've managed to buy the troll family. The Build-A-Tyrant trays can be configured in multiple ways, depending on your preference. Additional dice can fit in the chip holders of the tyrant tray as seen here. Now we're on to the main event, the largest drawer in the box. This drawer has space for up to 18 gear lock trays along the side and on top, and includes trays for the 12 gear locks that are currently available. You will be able to sticker the sides of each tray for ease of reference. With room for your gear lock chip and all associated dice, the gear lock trays make setup a breeze and they can be placed next to your mat during play for increased organization and table presence. You can even store the tray cover on the bottom of the tray when it's in use. Below the gear lock drawer is our heaviest drawer, which is used for all the mats and cards. Anything neoprene, from battle mats to neoprene dice trays to the Gearlock Child, will fit in this large section of the drawer. In the front of the drawer is a section for cards. We have included both a card divider option and a deck box option, including a larger deck box that can supplement the ones you've already received in Too Many Bones and its expansions. Organize your cards however you see fit. There are dividers for almost everything, Minus general encounters. I think we missed that one. Thankfully, there's a lot of blanks for you to use for that purpose. How do we organize our cards? Well, we like to set aside the three deck boxes that will be used in game and then use dividers to separate out all other cards. Keep in mind that like our other drawers, both the card and mat portions of this drawer are built with room for more goodies down the road. The two bottom drawers are used for storing chips, dice, and assorted materials. You're welcome to organize these drawers as you please, but let's show you how we did it. In the back of one of the drawers, we've placed the new card holder that you can use during gameplay. It's designed to fit two regular sized deck boxes and our new big deck box, but you can use it with just cards too. In the back of the other drawer, we've placed two dice trays. After storing the gear lock and tyrant dice in other places in the chest, two dice trays are more than enough to store the remaining dice. Next to the dice trays, we have placed two of the small chip storage cases you get in Bones expansions, organizing our sundry odds and ends like scars and splicing pegs. In the remainder of both drawers, we've placed five chip trays, two included with the trove chest, two from undertow, and one from Splice and Dice. You will only need one set of health chips, which you can store in one of the trays. 
Currently, our baddies and other assorted chips will fit in three of the remaining trays. We've also provided you with batty chip dividers and stickers that allow you to organize the trays however you see fit. Again, how would we organize this? Well, in the first tray, we've split the one-point baddies apart into each of their separate types. In the second tray, we've split the five-point baddies into their types, along with the last column containing the dual-type one- and five-point baddies from Splice and Dice. The final tray contains all 20-point baddies in the first column using the multi-type orange sticker. Some of you have asked why we didn't provide dividers to split out all types for the 20-point baddies. Since some of the types only contain two or three 20-point baddies, the dividers just get in the way at that point. We found it easier to combine all of them together. The second column in the third tray was used for our three-point mech and crown baddies. And the final column is our setup chips and a few chips that you may or may not be aware of. If you own a complete Too Many Bones collection, you'll find yourself with some redundant components when you combine everything together. You will not need more than the amount of health chips, lane markers, batty initiative dice, and lockpicking dice included in the base game. You will also have some extra effect dice, an extra deck box, a bunch of extra chip trays, and even an extra battle mat. If you're downsizing your battle mats, make sure to keep the one from Undertow. Well, I think that wraps up how you fit everything into this giant trove chest. Thank you for watching, and once again, we want to thank Justin Schaub for his impeccable design work. Who knows, if enough of you love this, maybe he'll do a Cloudspire relic chest someday?